His name's Jolly Old St. Nicholas, and my name's Lend Your Ear This Way. And this is <laughs> the, the Kickin' Kickin Ash Podcast. <laughs> Christmas, baby. I meant to get a little bell thing. <laughs> just ding, 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 Forgot. Ding, ding. Could have been like the Salvation Army just ringing it. We had pre, pre Christmas. <laughs> then we had pre Christmas. But tonight we have <laughs> Hanukkah. Grimus! Oh, I thought it was Hanukkah. <laughs> Is that, that is going to be so clipped to hell. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> fucking going to be listening in headphones yep. and hear you yell, Christmas! <clears throat> and it's just going to be bad. But, oh well. Um, we can start over. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, I think we should start over. I don't think we over. need to start over. I don't you think don't even know what you're drinking or what you're smoking. Start, start <laughs> it over. I know exactly what I'm drinking and exactly what I'm smoking. Well, in what but, order... Are we going to announce what we're having tonight, friend? I'll start it off. How's that sound? Okay, 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 okay. okay. Go go right ahead. Tonight, for our Christmas episode, we have some special Christmas-themed cigars. And I am smoking the Rabid Reindeer. (laughs) Just so you know, I have no idea if that's what it's called. I oh, think, it's called I that. Think so. No, I got it. I got the information. Okay. Up here. okay. On my cellular v- device, the here, Arnie. So, Let me, I was, so I was right. Let me show you. I don't got my glasses on because I've lost them. Okay. But the Rabid Reindeer uh, is uh, made by CAO, and it is a Christmas themed cigar. <laughs> <laughs> And it is just that. There is a couple in these lines. You gave you were actually kind enough to gift me one of every one in this line, I believe, correct? Yes, I did. So you had like the Angry Santa, the uh was the nasty nutcracker in there? Did you have that one or Yes, they're all in there. And there's another uh what was the frosty one? Wasn't that like a snowman? <clears throat> I don't know, pissed off snowman or something. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so this, uh, I don't really know much about this, uh, cigar. Didn't get a great rating on half wheel, got an 84, <laughs> but it's Christmas dream. It says, uh, the rabbit reindeer was a pretty good reminder of some of the things I enjoyed about the line. Solid construction, enjoyable flavors for the majority of the cigar were definite positives. Unfortunately, the profile kind of fell apart in the final third and suffered from some harshness as well. Despite that, if you like the MX2 line, I still can easily recommend you go find one or two. Smoke for yourself. So we'll find out. It says, says an 84, but we'll see for ourselves what the uh, rabid reindeer. But it's, it's just about being in the spirit, man. And it does have this really cool... It's almost kind of a little reminiscent of our logo. Because it's got the reindeer, yeah. and he's got a cigar sticking out of his mouth. Just like we have the kick-ass donkey. With the cigar sticking out of yeah. his mouth. You're right. And then we are drinking tonight. Do you want to talk about that or you want to talk about your cigar first? What do you think? Uh, it doesn't matter. We're, we are drinking one. Bones Coffee. All right. Well, I was waiting for you to join in with me as we said oh, yeah. which one we're smoking. Bones Coffee. Ah, it's and smoking. It, and, it's, <laughs> and it's called Oh Fudge. Yeah. It is the Fudge Coffee by Bones Coffee Company. Uh, I've been kind of slowly working my way through those packs. But Bones Coffee, if you're looking for a coffee that is unique and different than any other coffee, it's really good. And when it says it's flavored uh, to be something, it actually tastes like it. Yes. So pretty excited about that. So we're pairing that up. The cigar I'm smoking is also Christmas themed. And I went with a better cigar. <laughs> this is the 2016 Ugly Christmas Sweater by Ezra Zion. Box press broadleaf with a closed foot. Chocolate pepper bomb. Had one of these before. And they're uh, very Padron-esque, I might say. Oh, wow. So we are I very praise. excited to be uh, getting into our Christmas episode tonight. We have a lot of fun things to talk about. We have two lists tonight. The, Two lists. The, <laughs> what the fucking list podcast, boy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We podcast. like our lists. We like our lists. We do enjoy lists. It's kind of fun to make up it, it things is, we like. It is. And- but aside from that, our last list of the episode 
is going to be our top 10 list. We didn't want to do 25, so I'm honestly not sure Logan smoked 25 different <laughs> cigars. <laughs> that is not true. Uh, obviously, it's not true, buddy. Uh, yeah. It's okay. No need to defend right. yourself. It's cool. It's cool. Uh, but we did our top 10 list, so we are very excited to talk about that and to see kind of if there's any similarities, because we, we've done some reviews and we've smoked a lot of the same cigars mm-hmm. uh, and not done reviews. So <laughs> I'm pretty excited to see kind of where a lot of these fall in yeah. line. So. Yeah, so we basically just went with 10 cigars that we smoked this year, top 10. Nothing uh, doesn't have to like come out this year or anything like that, really. Just no, full disclosure though, my list contains a mix of cigars that have been in my top 10. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them worked their way out, some worked down, some worked up. Yeah. And then I've added in some newer blends this year that uh, really blew me away. So, full mm-hmm. disclosure, uh, I haven't smoked a full box of every single one of these cigars. Um, you know, but yeah, uh, to me, that doesn't typically matter. Nah, uh, and nah, also, nah. This isn't a highly coveted list, such as right. cigar aficionado. So we, we nobody's going to gonna want to run out and buy any of the cigars, probably. Absolutely, <clears throat> but we do th- we do think we have a, a decent decent palate, <clears throat> and we oh, we, I, we I tend think to I have a good palate. Yeah, we tend to turn people on to cigars. Also, if you didn't notice, we got a bottle of eggnog here. That's what I'm using for my creamer. Evan Williams in my coffee. Evan Williams eggnog. This shit's good. Dude. You want a little splash like, of that in your, well, in your I mean, coffee, bud? Coffee, my coffee's already cold because I made it an hour and a oh. half ago. But you just want to swig it from the old, the old bottle there. Why, certainly. Cheers, buddy. Merry Christmas. Ah. Merry Christmas. Of the Bones coffees I've had, I've had three now. The O Fudge is probably my favorite so far. Really? It's between that and the French toast. French toast is really good too. They mm-hmm. have the eggnog one. I'm kind of saving for Christmas morning. I'm I got gotcha. you. Already have that planned out. You'll get some, of course. But uh, so far, I've had the gingerbread. I'm not a huge gingerbread guy, but mm-hmm. it tastes exactly like gingerbread, and it's still pretty good. Nice. Uh, and then I had the um, peppermint bark, and that one's really good as well. So cool. So cool. far, Bones Coffee is amazing. Yep. Very good. Uh, send us more coffee bones for free. Yeah. And we'll smoke it on our podcast. Yeah, we'll, we keep we'll, saying smoke it. We'll, <laughs> We're just so used to smoking <laughs> shit here. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, I'm going to light this up, buddy. And I'm going to use... Are we, are, we, are we doing it? I'm going to use my new Secret Saney gift. I wanted to use it, too. You want to use it? Yeah, I would, like, I would like to try it out. Yeah, this Go is ahead, the ultimate. buddy. I've already used it a couple times, and I freaking love it. Oh. Just refilled her. You could tell. She, she's a cranked. She is feeling it tonight. <laughs> so just to recap you guys on what's been going on with us, uh, Joey has been off work all week and I've still somehow, off all week, somehow managed not to kill myself. When I say all week, I mean all last week. Well, most of last week and mm-hmm. then this week too. And I haven't killed myself yet. So I like this lighter. I like this one too, dude. Prometheus makes some awesome lighters. Actually, they do. Prometheus, I feel like it's like my brand of lighter. I used this um, punch last night when I smoked uh, my evening cigar. Mm-hmm. And um, it's really awesome. Works really good. The draw on the cigar I smoked was perfect after I used the punch. So I was like, I've only pun- like punched a cigar a handful of times in my life. So um, Punches I- are good. I just have to be in the mood for it. Yeah, it I, takes I, a little bit more time and diligence. Yeah. So I prefer to just. This one was pretty simple though. Cut. It's it's got a you know it's. Yeah, I mean they're they're pretty sharp. It's not too bad. So they work out good. Okay, so. So. What do you want to talk about first? You want to talk about cigars first? Uh, or well, Christmas I mean, movies. So we'll get right into the Christmas movies. I'd always like to give our initial right off the bat. Okay. What you got? Got a little flavor notes here. This is very um. Very light flavor, um, and but it's got a kind of n- a nice little uh, hint of kind of creamy sweetness to it. Um, definitely like accentuated by the eggnog fudge coffee I have going on right now. <laughs> um, but it definitely has like just a, a mild like um, almost milk chocolate sweetness to it. And that's about all I'm getting right now. Actually, it's pretty it's pretty apparent though. No pepper. Uh, but very uh, mild uh, body, just right off the light. You There's... said it got a 84? Mm-hmm. 
let's uh, let's rate this at the end. See what you give it. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah, that'll be interesting. So far, so far, I kind of like it. It's definitely, um, you know, not probably, you know, we'll see how it develops. But so far, not the, you know, I'm not really a mild yeah. bodied smoker. But yeah, let it get into the first third. See yeah, how it develops. You know, yeah. nice. Where'd you come up with that phrase, dude? That's original. Don't know, dude. <laughs> Put it on some shirt. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, Ezra Zion. 2016 ugly Christmas sweater. Uh, as mentioned, it's a little unfair for me because this isn't the first time I had this, but uh, I do remember a lot of, you know, coffee, a lot of, you know, chocolate notes and uh, very peppery for me, uh, which is why I told you that the fudge bones would probably be mm-hmm. um, good uh, tonight. So pretty much the same. I mean, it starts out... With the coffee, I, as far as, you know, as, as well as my memory can serve me, uh, chocolate picked up a little bit, like maybe after the first third, but coffee, pepper, a uh, little bit of earth. Very good nice. cigar. Very nice. All right. So like we said, we got some Christmas, a Christmas topic. We do. Can't say really say Christmas topics because the first one is just about our we do have favorite two. cigars we do have of the year. Topics. Yeah. So we're going to talk about favorite cigars of 2019 yep. and our all-time favorite Christmas movies. Where should we start, Arnie? Because we have not <laughs> planned <laughs> this out yet at all, the order or anything. We're moving the order. Well, I'm just saying we didn't know which one we were going to talk about first. We didn't say anything about it. Oh, I we? think we should end on our top 10 list. Oh, you want to end on That's going to be the meat of this conversation. Okay. Right now, the movies, and our, we're going to just talk about other Christmas shit. Mm-hmm. It's going to be like the potatoes. I fuck with it. I fuck with it. All right. Well, in that case, why don't you start us off? I will, and you can start us off on the cigar list. Sounds good. So I'm doing number five to number one. Number five to number one. Okay. Same with our cigar list. Ten to one. Absolutely. Number five, favorite Christmas movie. We did, I, we did this with our Halloween movies. It's same, same thing. <laughs> Jingle all the way. Very nice. We talk about this one a lot. It's an uh, older-ish movie. Mm-hmm. It came out in like 96. So I was five years old. Yep. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is just that fucking man. You know what I mean? And uh, it's a funny movie. And it has Sinbad in it. <laughs> it's a fantastic just, movie. It's a good movie, bro. Yep. It's a very good movie. Uh, yes. And it's not Christmas without it. No. Jingle All the Way. Sinbad is friggin' hilarious. If you go back and watch that movie as an adult, I watched it a lot yes. as a kid. There's so much of that movie that you just don't realize mm-hmm. is hilarious when you're a kid. And, uh, like, you even find out that, that um, uh, the Santa is uh, the big Santa who he fights in the, yep. in, the, in the warehouse full of Santas is the big show. Yep. Um, I didn't but, know that. But, uh, okay, so Jingle All the Way. I'm not going to talk too much about that one because it's definitely appearing on my list, too. <laughs> ah, I, I thought so. I See, figured. we always, we always That's have this. That's why we like these lists. Yeah, we always have this uh, issue where we, like, spoil our other ones. That, uh, but, uh, but that's okay. So, Jingle All the Way, definitely a solid number five. Okay. Number five for me is Miracle on 34th Street. Ah. Yeah. It's a good movie. Definitely a good, solid, like, actual uh positive message christmas movie you know what i mean like mm-hmm. one of those ones that like actually can you know kind of put you in the spirit of christmas after you watch it because it's just a feel good movie um my grandfather and my mother were always really partial to it yep you know around christmas time it was one that they really liked to watch so it holds a little bit of a sentimental value to me um and just kind of like you know all the things that happen in it, like it, it involving the Macy's Day Parade and, yeah. and just all those sorts of things. Just it just makes it a really cool movie for me. Yeah, it is um, a good movie. And so, Miracle on Forty Thirty Fourth Street, true, buddy, is my fifth favorite. I almost said cigar movie. <laughs> cigar movie. Why can't we talk tonight? Uh, is my fifth favorite Christmas movie of all time. Take us on to number four. Number four for me was the Santa Claus. The Tim Allen Santa Claus. Oh, yeah. That 1994 joint. That's a fantastic movie. Fantastic movie. And the, and the OG one is the best. The other ones tried, and they're not as good. Yeah, and 
Yeah, number two, number three weren't great. Yeah. The original, the first, the Santa Claus, Tim Allen. Come mm-hmm. on, man. It's just, it's a good movie. It's a so good, good movie. And Tim Allen really kind of has his part in a lot of Christmas movies, I feel like. Yeah, Christmas with the Cranks, another one. I don't. I wasn't another there. honorable mention for that one. I mean, that's a good movie. Yeah, too. that kind of like that. That might crack my top ten, but. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Tim Allen. Every anytime I see him in something, man, it's usually enjoyable. He's just yeah, seems like an all American kind of dad type of dude, you know. Which apparently he was kind of a scumbag before he started doing family movies. Yeah, that's and what stuff. I heard. Yeah, I think he was into some not so cool stuff. But that's what they say about uh, or really cool stuff. Bob Saget too. Yeah, really. Cool stuff. <laughs> Bob Saget is filthy, dude. You ever seen that guy talk? Yes. Like outside of Family Matters, or yes. what was he on Full House? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if you, if you ever saw Half Baked, that's all oh yeah, you know, yeah. You know what I mean? Dude, his stand up is one of the funniest I've ever seen. It he is has an it's HBO good. special. It's good. All right, so your number four was Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. Really good, really good choice. My number four is Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Ah, another good one. Love this movie. For two reasons. One, it it tells the origin story of Santa so well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the whole like, you know, he was, you know, raised by the Kringles, which were the elves. And then, you know, <clears throat> just how he went down and. It's like a better version of Elf. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like way older and made of clay, claymation, but. Right. But I'm saying. No, I see what you're saying. Raised by, you know, yeah, the yeah. Kringles, but. Yeah, I understand. Um, so yeah, and I really like the, I'm gonna be honest, I like the music in it, like all yeah. the songs and stuff, like yeah, bring agree. me back to a, uh, to a simpler time when I was a child and would watch that movie. I just watched it with my kids the other night and I was like, I think I was watching more intently than they were. Probably. <laughs> I, I, I do the same way. And of course the, uh, Burger Meister Meister Burger. I don't know why I just get a kick out of him every time. Cause he just seems like my spirit animal. Kind of. So yeah, number four, Santa Claus is coming to town is my number four favorite Christmas movie of all time. Number three for me is The Grinch. Mm. Which one, you might be asking? The new Grinch that's on Netflix, the Benedict Cumberpatch? I hope not. It's not my favorite. No. But I do like it. It's yeah. still very good. Yeah. Uh, can I guess? Can I, can, I be, can I say? Yeah. I mean, it better be the Jim Carrey yeah, it's one. It's the Jim Carrey Okay. One. <laughs> the cartoon's always original for me. Always yeah. watch The Grinch every year. Uh, we've been watching the newer one a lot because Rowan, my son, really likes it, so we watch that like 12 times a day. But mm-hmm. we still like the cartoon one, the original cartoon one with Boris Karloff. Of course, of course. So we watch that one every year as well. Yeah. And then we always watch The Grinch with Jim Carrey because I feel like they just outdid themselves on that movie. I it's mean, so it captured great. it perfectly. It's a great movie. Uh, I, I really enjoy it. but. I like the fact that I can put the Grinch in there and I can include all three movies. Yeah. It's a little sneaky. That's true. That's bitty, true. Bitty sneaky, sir. I'm going to be honest. I totally blanked on that one. I totally blanked on it. I didn't even, I, for some reason, I just, it didn't even cross my mind. Sleeping on the Grinch. Yeah. It, w- it would probably, it would be up there for me. It would be, it would probably be one or two, actually, you know. Yeah. Um, if I had thought of it, but I'm going to just say that because I didn't think of it, maybe it, it really, <clears> I don't when know. We, when we finish this list, I'd like to, do just one more movie, mm-hmm. but I want to make it interesting because there's a movie that I always also watch around Christmas time mm-hmm. that is not technically a Christmas movie, okay? But I like it, and it's not Die Hard, yeah. As much as I love Die Hard, so if you have a movie in your head that you typically like to watch around Christmas time, that's not a Christmas movie, yeah. I want to talk about it. Okay, okay, I can I can get down with that. Um. My number three favorite Christmas movie is Scrooged. Bill Murray. Bill Murray, That's baby. That's another good one. It is. I was, th- we're on number three for number you, Number right? three. Okay. Number three for me is Scrooged. It was hard, kind of hard to, I don't know, man. It's, it, it, all of these, I mean, all of these could be anywhere on this list. Let's right. just be honest. That's you know, the way I'm just, it was. Just kind of focused on getting, you know, the ones I wanted in there. Of course, I, I totally blanked on the Grinch. Uh, but Scrooge, I mean, any, first of all, Bill Murray for me is up there with, you know, anything he's ever done, I'll watch and love and enjoy. Um, but I'm also really partial to A Christmas Carol, uh, specifically. Uh, I like The Muppets Christmas Carol. 
I like, uh, you know, the freaking Mickey Mouse Christmas Carol. I like the OG Christmas Carol, you know, just any version of the Christmas Carol, I, you know, something I really like to watch at Christmas time. But Scrooge is the number one best version for me. And it's primarily due to Bill Murray. <laughs> you know, I didn't think about it, but Mickey Mouse, uh, what's the, the like real old original one? Is it once or twice upon a Christmas? Like the, the first one. I, you I would think know. it'd be once upon a Christmas, yeah, but who yeah. knows. But um, that one, I actually never saw. Mm -hmm. So I've never been like this huge Disney buff. I have to see Mickey Mouse and whatnot. But same. Last year, we watched that one with my son. Mm hmm. Good, good, good movie. movie. Good little movie. I'm gonna check that one out, man. I, if I, I know Disney it, Plus. I know it, but I haven't. If I've seen it, it's been so long, I can't yeah. really think of it. So, so. Um, so yeah, number three, Scrooged. Your number two. As he puffs his. Now I already went to the bathroom. Thanks. <laughs> 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 number two for me. Number one and number two are no brainers. They will never be, ever, be, replaced. Uh oh. Number two, Chevy Chase mm. and Christmas Vacation. <laughs> Number two, boy. That's a fucking great movie. Christmas <clears throat> in my house will not happen yeah. until I watch a Christmas Vacation. That's such the, a good one, man. Dude, it's, it's a classic. That's another one I blanked on. I That's another one it. I blanked There's so can't many good it. Christmas there movies, are. man. There are. And I, but come on, man. Yeah. I mean, no, that's... that's one that didn't yeah. actually make my list, but is also a classic, is Home Alone, the original Oh, yeah. I th well, I thought about that, too. Yeah, dude. It's, there's so many. That's I why a, I was like, we should extend our list, because there's oh, so yeah, many. Yeah, we probably just, should have. But whatever. It keeps it interesting. Yeah, yeah. Keeps I think it it's, I think, you know, it's fun to just kind of come up with them real quick off the fly, like, sort of like we, uh, we did, so. Well, I've been ready all day. <laughs> well, you had off today, so. Um, I'm, I'm a Home Alone 3 guy. The fuck you. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's the one that I had on VHS, so I watched it uh, a lot. <clears throat> Dude, that's it not doesn't even, even have that's Macaulay not even Home Alone. I know it's not, but that's just Macaulay what... Culkin is, 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 is Home Alone. Yeah, I know. I'm going to get fucking ridiculed for this. But yeah, dude. All my Home Alone 3 people out there. All three of you. <laughs> it's just my three alternate accounts. I'll comment and be like, Home Alone 3 was the best. It wasn't the best. I'm not sitting here saying it's better. It's just the it's one, just the just the the one that's near and dear to me. Because it's what we had on VHS. And, yeah. That's, uh, anyway, back to your original one. Uh, let's just, real quick. Because we're kind of rolling through this anyway. So I feel like we have time. What's your favorite scene in Christmas Vacation? Jesus, man. There are a lot. Uh, you know, everybody probably thinks the very historic, you know, the shitter's full bit. Always. And while that's a good one. Yeah. Dude, I don't know why, but I just really like when they go sledding. Sledding, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> because we, uh, which I don't think you know where my parents live, but where uh -huh. my parents live in their cul-de-sac, there's this huge hill that as okay. kids we used to slide down. And yeah. I remember one year as a kid, we were like, let's spray some fucking canola oil in this bitch. <laughs> and we wiped it up. And I don't know if it really did anything or not. I mean, I yep. can't remember. It was years ago. Mm-hmm. But dude, it's just it's a it's a fun it's just a fun bit, man. You know, I, I love that part. Um, I have, man, there's there's so many, dude. Um, I'm like I'm really partial to like when the squirrels in the tree, mm -hmm. and uh, just anything involving when he totally like wrecks his neighbor shit. Yeah. Um, but probably my favorite scene in that movie is when he gets his Christmas bonus. Yeah, that's yeah, dude, that's a good one. That is a good one. And too. it's a jelly of the month club. Yeah. That is good. That is very good. Dude, that's just it's just a it epitomizes like Chevy Chase just did the whole like average guy bit. Yeah. Too well. Yes. You know what I mean? Like you yeah, just I if agree. you have a family, if you've ever taken your family on vacation or had them over for Christmas, he does so good at just exaggerating those little funny things that may you know quirky stuff and just making it way over the top and and hilarious yeah like when I they agree. cut the turkey too and it just yeah just, dude that's a <laughs> honestly the, the the eating bit is always oh yeah been a favorite one i mean yeah dude, so there's, there's so many and it's hard to just kind of categorize yeah. my most favorite because the whole movie oh, from yeah. start to finish is just amazing like him dreaming about the pool yeah the pool oh, and then <laughs> he gets this huge fucking tree i mean yeah, yeah. dude that's why i love 
I love that movie. You know, there's yeah, a, dude, there's a shit ton of Christmas movies. Like so relatable. We're talking about Christmas with the Cranks. You know, I mean, yeah. I like fucking. Um, I'll be home for Christmas. I don't know if you've ever seen that one or not. Was that it has Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Taylor, Taylor Thomas. Thomas. Yeah, yeah. That's a good movie. I mean, dude, there's so mm-hmm. many. There's a lot. So many Christmas movies out there. Absolutely. Have you ever seen Deck the Halls with um? Fuck, man, I can't think of his name. Uh, jeez, I'm gonna tip my tongue. Danny DeVito's in it. Uh, Deck the Hall. Is it uh, Vince Broderick? Vaughn? No. Broderick. Oh, Matthew Broderick. Magic, Matthew yeah, Broderick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking Vince Vaughn. Dude, that's a good one too, man. Yeah. Or Four Christmases. Four Christmases is good. Vince Vaughn. <laughs> dude, Vince Vaughn. Or, or, what was the other one? Fred Claus. Did you yeah, ever see that for, one? Yeah, that one's yeah. goofy. Dude, goofy so, so. They just, just, there's so many. There's so many good movies. Yeah. Um, so my uh, number two, <laughs> it's kind of funny because it's actually, I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily a good movie or not, <laughs> but it's again just one of those ones that like is a little sentimental to me in a way. Um, and that is, it's called Surviving Christmas, and it has James see. Gandolfini and Ben Affleck in it. Oh, wait, and, maybe I have seen and, that. And uh, <clears throat> basically, one, I love it because it has James Gandolfini in it. R.I.P. James Gandolfini. Just, he's fucking amazing. Um, two, it has Ben Affleck, and Ben Affleck in this movie is absolutely god-awful. He's terrible he's like forcing the entire movie like his acting is just dog shit and i know i'm not selling you on this movie at all but it's, that's not the point mm. the point is it has a lot of goofy funny moments that my family quotes all the time and it's actually why we call my dad who's now the grandfather of my kids duda <laughs> because he pays a guy he basically pays a family to be, uh, Ben Affleck pays a family. Yeah, I th- yeah, yeah. Okay, to be his family that. during Christmas. I have seen that. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> uh, Christina Applegate's in it, who's smoking hot, of course. Of course. Um, but the premise is that you know they want to make all this money because Ben Affleck's rich, and so they try and put up with him for Christmas. But he gives them all these scripts, like to try and make it like his Christmas. You know, growing up, and, right? Right. Uh, you know, he has a guy um, who plays his duda. Who like ends up getting sick, and then they have to bring in another guy to play Duda, who's a black dude and doesn't look anything like right. <laughs> the actual Duda. Right. Um, and it just it's really funny. So, Surviving Christmas for me is just one of those ones I gotta watch with my family every year. Um, or it just doesn't feel like Christmas. So same. Number two. Same. Number one. Number one. Which should be your number one, and if it's not, dude, I'm I'm probably gonna be very very fucking pissed off at you. Because this deserves to be everyone's number one movie. I can already tell you it's not. <laughs> My number one Christmas movie. <laughs> the holy grail of Christmas movies. I'm ready for this. A Christmas Story. Ah, uh, see, I, to you me. blacked out <laughs> on a Christmas no, Story? No, 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 I didn't black out on a Christmas Story. Dude, no. Actually, look. the first one I thought, and I was like, no way is it making my top five. Are you kidding me? I love the movie. Dude, no, no, no. You don't understand, man. That is the movie that puts me into the Christmas spirit more than any other movie. See, to me, it's so over... It's not, dude. Done. It's not, and I don't you even want to so? fucking talk about it. I mean, it. I still love it, nah, I st- but it nah. like plays twenty four seven. What's what's your, what's your first fucking movie? The Killer Turkey bullshit. Well, back let's on let's here? talk about your. Yeah. I don't want to talk. About Thanks, it, bro. Killing Two. <laughs> the Christmas Redux. No, it, it is a great movie. I mean, we're drinking the O Fudge. Didn't even make it into your top five. I th- I thought it would be your number one. It's a great movie. Great. I mean, it's, it's the it's, movie. It's it, the Christmas it, movie. It is. I mean, it's, it's iconic. It's dude. it's pretty much the standard for Christmas yeah. movies at this point. I mean, it's the only. Yeah. Aside from fucking Elf, and don't get me wrong, I like Elf. But yeah. Aside from Elf getting played every fucking day on ABC. Yes. Yeah. To from me, from August to the fucking end of the year. See, a Christmas story blows Elf. Christmas out of the water. story comes on for twenty four solid hours, dude. Yeah, and do you does. know who watches the Christmas story for 24 solid hours? Everyone. And me. <laughs> <laughs> it's on. Yeah, I think it probably comes on tomorrow, like noonish or something. Probably, yeah. I mean, it's look, <clears throat> it, it's the one, man. It, it is. It I'm is, not saying yeah. that you're wrong. It's uh, just I, for I me. Know, I know. You know what I you know what I'm saying. I, f- I feel you, buddy. But I do I do like that movie. Quick, quick favorite scene from that movie. Because there's a lot of good scenes in that movie, too. Do you have one? In- I have one in mind. You want me to go first? Go ahead, because okay. I have a few. Uh, 
one of the funniest scenes in that movie is when he actually thinks he shoots his eye out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why that always gets me when he goes out and he's finally got the gun. And he, like, well, I don't remember what he exactly does, but he shoots something and then, like, an icicle falls on his right. freaking head. And uh, so that's super funny. And then uh, there's another really funny moment where um, when he, after he curses, he calls, um, he, he, he's like, where did you learn that yeah. uh, word? And his mom is, he's, he doesn't want to say his dad. He's like, I hear my dad say that word all the time, but he doesn't want to say that because he'll know he'll get in more trouble. Right. So he tells him it's like a friend from school. Schwartz. Yeah, Schwartz, yeah. Schwartz! And, and his mom, uh, his mom calls the kid's mom yeah. and he's like where do you think he learned it and you can it's hear the mom you can you can hear the mom on the other end go probably from his father yeah, and that right. shit just i don't know why makes me that's laugh a good, so hard that's, a, that's good because yeah. to me anytime i watch that and i'm like this sounds like if i was a kid and i got in trouble for this exact same thing not only would i have heard it from my dad but i also would have blamed one of my friends mm-hmm Yep, and then everybody else would have also thought that I heard it from my dad. Yep, <laughs> so it always so relatable home for me. So relatable. Um, damn, dude. You know, I don't know, man. I mean, I really like, and I cannot remember his name. But here's a fun fact for you: the dad in the Christmas story mm-hmm. was actually um, uh, your B- dad, Billy Madison's dad, no, in the movie Billy Madison. Was he? Mm-hmm. God, I'd have to like see that in action to actually I have a bad time picturing Crazy. faces. Of course he's since passed. Right. RIP, but dude, uh I don't know, man. I mean I really I really like I like the Chinese restaurant. Oh yeah. I mean that's <laughs> when know, they that's a, a good one. Um <laughs> How about when Santa like kicks them down opening, the sled? Yeah, yeah, that's or the good. slide. I like when they're opening opening the gifts. Yeah, you know, and he just looks like every dad on Christmas. That yeah. sits down and they're just like, we have a headache. We just want to get this shit over with, you know. <laughs> uh, man, it's it's another one of those things like Christmas vacation. You know what I mean? Just the whole. There's so many parts. Yeah. You know, when uh, what's his fuck face gets his tongue sucked through the pole. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> there's so many historical moments in that movie. Yeah. It's one of those you know ones I mean? where every that's scene the is memorable. era that I wish I always grew up in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We talk about that all the time. Yep. So it just it strikes it strikes home to me and I really love it. Uh, and my Christmas isn't complete without watching the Christmas story at least 28 times. <laughs> I, I, I rock with it, dude. I respect it. Uh, quick pause to say that the burn on this thing is pretty damn good. <laughs> I think I'm smoking quicker than you are tonight. I know, right? Something's going on right here. Maybe this thing's just a, a slow burner. I'm going to take this band off already, though. Um, all right, so my number one. <laughs> uh, God, fuck. I literally was just... <laughs> Heading never fails, never fails. Well, I should I just I, go ahead and ash mine, but I think I can. There you go. See, um, so my number one, you straight up spoiled at number five. <laughs> Jingle yeah, all yeah. the way, dude. I this is this is the movie to me over Christmas Vacation and a Christmas Story, over every all over them all. I it's Christmas is about nostalgia for me, and it's not that I. <sighs> I didn't watch those movies as much growing up because it was well, they weren't, you know, until I was older and could understand the humor, you know, there wasn't as much about them that I gravitated towards. So, but Jingle All the Way for me, um, you know, like we talked about earlier, I've since gone back and watched, and I don't know what it is. Uh, you know, we talked about this on when we talked about our infamous cigar smokers and we talked about Arnold Schwarzenegger, mm-hmm. but I don't know what it is about like him just pl- like this big, super jacked Austrian playing like a normal middle class yeah. dad with the first name like Howard and <laughs> it just it it gets to me man and uh like i said Sinbad is freaking hilarious in that movie when he's like talking about like his wife sleeping with everybody at the post office right. but him right and he's like then he's like he he goes and he pretends he has a bomb in that package right and he's like shaking it around he's like this, this is a bomb this, you know yeah so um I don't know, man. It just uh, always was one that spoke to me. Um, it was kind of funny to me. Always like, you know, being a little kid, I always wanted like the newest, latest, greatest action figure. So it kind of makes fun of that uh, yeah. aspect of Christmas. And um, yeah, man, it's, it's just it's just that one that for me, I always love to watch every year. And uh, so it made my number one. It's a good movie. 
I I I, I agree. An That's honorable mention one. for all the other movies though that we talked about. Yeah. You know, because there's a ton out there, a ton of Christmas movies. I try to cram them all in, and sometimes I don't get enough time. Yeah. To watch them all, but these are like the five that I must watch. Mm-hmm. But Christmas is just a magical time of year, man. It's when everybody. It's it's to me. It feels like that's when. Yeah. Not, you know, speaking real talk, but it's when the world kind of slows down, and I feel like everybody just kind of grasps a sense of what life's about. You know what I mean? Yeah. At least most people. Some people go the opposite uh, yeah, route, which yeah. sucks. But Christmas uh, has always been my favorite time of year. Always. Yeah, man. That stretch from just right, you know, Thanksgiving, right before mm-hmm. Thanksgiving to Christmas. It's always an awesome time. Yeah, I was, thinking, I was like thinking about it the other day. And I mean, sometimes you just feel like Christmas doesn't feel the same. Yeah. And then I like what I do. I always definitely like. Definitely a kid's holiday for sure. Yeah. I enjoyed it way more when I was a kid. But I, I'll listen to like, um, you know, like I was listening to Sinatra the other day singing Christmas songs. And I was like, man, I just want Christmas to feel the way it feels when Frank sings about it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like it, the way he when you hear when I hear like him just singing uh, Christmas songs. Yeah. It just it, that that's when I'm like, man, this is like I, I can feel a little bit of how Christmas felt way back when. Yeah. You know? So there you guys have it. Our five favorite Christmas movies each. How did we do? My list is obviously the best one. It's a pretty solid list, dude. I think uh I, I give think... your list the same rating that that cigar received. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's what I'm going to say about that, Arnie. Is I'm going to say that I mean, you went for the the fan favorites, the big hitters. The, no, 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 no. You know, I went for the you went the movies. you went for the low hanging fruit, dude. And I went more niche, dude. I'm surprised you didn't put the fucking preacher's wife on there. Yeah, I don't even know what that is, but <laughs> 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 That's good I'm surprised you didn't too. put Krampus on it. You freaking oh, devil worshiping piece of garbage. Cr- Krampus is a good movie. <laughs> it's a good movie, and we yeah. should watch it tonight. You should rent it. We should watch Krampus. it. Krampus. We should watch it. Let's watch it. Ooh. We should watch it. I kind of want to watch Christmas Vacation now. You watch that yet this year? Yes. All right, well, we're going to watch it again. But I, well, you know what I haven't watched? <laughs> Krampus? Krampus. Jesus You've Christ. never seen it before, dude. You I've would never like seen it. Krampus, dude. You would like it. I've seen Krampus at least one time a month when my wife was on that special. <laughs> ah. <laughs> special week. Uh, <laughs> ah. If you're listening, honey, I love you. So um, rolling right along. Let's, uh, what's uh, update us with the uh, cigar notes? Well, I don't, don't even think I've made it into the first third of this thing, dude. I feel like it's burning super slow. Hold on, let me just let me just puff on her a little. Well, while you do that, my first third fell off. Solid chunk, great construction. Uh, coffee, cedar, earth, pepper. Pepper's still there. I mean, pepper remains pretty much strongly throughout till about mid band point. Um, <clears throat> so pepper's still there, as mentioned. The chocolate is definitely picking up now. Coffee kind of dies down a little bit. Uh, then just basically switches to chocolate and pepper. I mean, it's a chocolate and pepper bomb, but it's very, very mellow. Perfect draw. Uh, you know, the box press. I mean, I know you're a big box press guy, but look at that. It's a nice looking cigar, man. Um, for me, I'm getting uh, <clears throat> really just some like more of that uh, milk chocolate, cocoa, a little bit of coffee. Um uh, you know, maybe just a slight bit of earth with it as well. Um, it's definitely, uh, so far better than I expected, uh, after reading what they, you know, kind of half wheel had to say about it. Um, you know, of course not ready to give it a rating yet, but so far, no, didn't give us the rating. <laughs> so far it seems to be outperforming, uh, you know, my expectation for it. Uh, the, the burn was pretty razor sharp. It still is. I'm just going to touch it up a little because it's, I'm a perfectionist and you can give that's how I do. every third, every third, a, it's a, a 21. <laughs> <laughs> so it equals 84. At the end. Yeah. What's with the fourth third? Wait, wait, what? Well, yeah, you have your third third. <laughs> and then your fourth third. And then your fourth third. Yeah, I was about and to go up to fifth third. Give every third zero. at 21 and it'll equal 84. Yeah. Four thirds. <laughs> that would be so 63, you jackass. No. All right, now. Oh, you're saying the fourth third. Yeah, if you, 21 times four is 80, 84. <laughs> uh, I hate you. <laughs> All right. And, uh, Without further ado, 
Nobody ever said I was good at math. Without further ado, we're going to get into our top 10 cigars of 2019. Top Everything 10. that you guys have been waiting for. Uh, I can tell you right <laughs> now. No doubt anybody's been waiting for this. Nine of mine are Olivas. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, 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 stab at a friend. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Who started? I was going to, you were going to start? You, I was going to start. start. I was going to start. Yep. Where to start? Probably at number 10. My number 10 cigar of 2019 is the Roma Craft Aquitaine. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Ooh, buddy. Number 10, huh? Number 10 is the Aquitaine. Um, I am going to be completely honest with you here. I have a no notes <laughs> on any of my, like, I can't recall the flavors, uh, right in front of me right now. Cause I just have my phone out. Um, so, um, but that being said, we did smoke the Roma craft Aquitaine on an episode of this podcast, a couple episodes back, or at least I did. You yeah. smoked the Baca. Um, and it was a fantastic cigar. The construction was great. The flavor was awesome. Um, and for that, it is my number 10 cigar of 2019. If you haven't tried the Roma Craft Aquitaine, I definitely, uh, suggest you start with that. If you're trying to dive into Roma Craft. Uh, yeah, you actually smoked the Aquitaine, but I have yeah. smoked several Aquitaines. Correct. Yeah. Which is why <laughs> <laughs> my number 10 cigar is the Roma Craft you're... Aquitaine. No way. Yeah, dude. I swear. <laughs> But I always take notes on my cigars and so forth. I'm, I am kind of anal. I always keep up with like a, a top 10 list me, for me personally. So I always can go back and be like, all right, these are the cigars that I enjoy the most. I mean, mm -hmm. by now I kind of remember it by heart. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, so the Anthropology, which is the Grand Corona Aquitaine, phenomenal cigar. Construction's there. Flavor's there. Performance is there. Skip Martin is a cool motherfucker. Yep. It's just, it's a killer brand. It's a killer cigar. Roma Craft Aquitaine made both of our top tens. And that to me is interesting. That's that already very already our first cigar. Yeah. I know this is going to differentiate um, as we go on, but it, it is very interesting that we started right at the same spot. Yes. Because we, we actually, um, we, we actually disagree on quite a, I, I think probably more than we agree on. Yeah, probably. Well, I mean, I would, well, I'll say this. We t typically, we both, if, if, if a scar is good to both of us, we typically both recognize that. Yes. But then how good it is, it is, is typically, yeah. is typically different. Right. So, um, and then there are actually a few cigars that I will, you know, either I'll say, yeah, I really like that cigar. And you'll be like, eh, it's kind of not for me and vice versa. So, um, all right, well, Roma Craft Aquitaine. If that doesn't tell you something right there, Roma Craft nothing to do. Aquitaine. Number nine for me is the Cloud Hopper. It's a good one. By Warped. It's a good one. That's ranking high for me, but not top ten. Yeah. Um, it was a phenomenal cigar that I also smoked on this podcast. Um, I was a little biased and just started to use stuff that I smoked on the podcast because... Um, Prior to that, I didn't take uh, flavor uh, notes and things like that as serious just because, you know, I typically just smoke cigars with buddies and half the time I'd be drinking or, uh, you know, doing whatever. And, you know, I did I did take time to enjoy them, but I never really, you know, rated them. Um, but that being said, not all of these were on the uh, on the podcast. But, um, right. yeah, the Cloud Hopper. Just really great, strong, full flavor. Um, you know, a little bit of a, a spice to it, a little bit of a pepper, um, and just some great, uh, you know, uh, rich uh, flavor to it that I think it only runs about $7, if I'm not mistaken, for the Cloud Hopper. Does that sound about uh, right to yeah, you? Yeah, it's around 7 7 8 bucks or something. Um, and so for that, it made my number nine. My number nine. <clears throat> is a cigar that I know I've talked about on the podcast before. It is the Blackworks Studio Sindustry Toro, which is mm. like a six, six and a half by 48 closed foot cigar. It's got a little pigtail in it, so it's a very attractive cigar. That thing is like a caramel bomb. Mm. Very good flavors. 
it performs. Very it, nice. It, it really fucking performs. Uh, <clears throat> I've had more of the Blackworks Studio line than I have the Black Label Trading Company line. Uh, and I really like everything so far that I've had from Blackworks Studio. But this industry just tops it for me. It's a good cigar. Nice. You really need to get your hands on one. Yeah, I have not had that one yet. Still but. have some, but, <clears throat> you know. You're selling it. Selling it with that caramel bomb. Yeah, there, it, it's a very good cigar. Mm. So, on to number eight. Number eight. Number eight for me comes from my personal favorite brand of cigars. If you watched our top five uh, cigar brands, and that is the Southern Draw Cedrus or Cedrus, depending on. Who you are and how you like to pronounce it, but I think it's a Cedrus because specifically with this cigar, I get a very uh, cedary note from it. Um, uh, One of the things I noticed right about the cigar right off the bat is the cold draw has this like citrusy, uh, you know, sort of like almost like almost like lemon lime to me taste to it. Um, And then when you light it up, you just get those like uh, sweet cedar notes. Um, and just kind of a, a very rich, earthy body to it as well. So, mm-hmm. um, Cedrus was a good cigar. Love that cigar. Uh, comes in Bellicoso, which is probably my favorite Vitola. Um, and, uh, so for that, it made my number eight. And if you haven't tried that bad boy yet, make sure you go get one because, uh, it is totally worth it. Yes. So what do you got for number eight? My number eight is a, another brand that has been uh, in my top five favorite brands, which we also went over. Crown Heads, La Imperiosa, Corona Gorda. Mm. Mm-hmm. To me, the La Imperiosa is, in my personal opinion, obviously made my top ten list, the best offering that Crown Heads has put out. Yeah. I, I like pepper on my cigars, and that captures it. It's got a beautiful band. It's the cigar that introduced me to Crown Heads, and I've never looked back. I've had a lot of other Crown Heads. I've had a lot of Crown Head cigars. Yeah. But the La Imperiosa is the one that when I go out and I see one, I'm like, I have to have this. Mm-hmm. You know? doesn't matter what shop I go to. If they have a La Imperiosa, I'm grabbing at least one, and I'm stockpiling them. You nice. know, It's a good cigar. Probably went through a box or so within the last several years myself. Good cigar. It's just, it's, it's perfect. And it's, I, in my opinion, it's one of the most underrated Crown yeah. Head cigars. You hardly hear them talk about it. Um, yeah, I actually, believe it or not, Crown Heads didn't make my top ten. But mm. there's, um, it's rough. I, I, you know, with there's the, just uh, so many with the Christmas story. <laughs> there's just so many great cigars that we've had this year. Um, that I didn't. One of them didn't really speak to me as much as some of these other ones, but uh, they they do make just freaking awesome cigars. And I'm really wanting to get my hands on that uh, La Coalition. Yeah, we need to get. Yeah, we need to get this. We have so many cigars though. And uh, somebody else, uh, oh, actually uh, Brody, shout out to you, Brody, my secret Santa from the group, uh, sent me the La Crema. Mm-hmm. That what it's, that's what, I believe that's what it's called. And uh, <laughs> it's I'm not what it's called, but is it not? I think it's La La Crema. La Crema, La Crema, La Crema. I don't know. Whatever. I'm not good at pronouncing a lot of Yeah, we butcher, <laughs> I, we butcher names. Uh, but the fact of the matter is I'm really looking forward to trying that, too. I've heard a lot of good things about yes, that. Yes, those are actually <clears throat> very good. Very, very good. Um, all right, so on to number seven. Uh, and number seven, um, I almost thought about making higher, but I only really smoked one, and that was also on the podcast. Uh, and it was so absolutely freaking good that I'm throwing it in my top ten um, because I know that it was just that good that it already made it. And that is the Blackbird Cuco. Yeah. Uh, that cigar was phenomenal. I think, uh, you know, we started our new 100 rating system, and I think I gave it a 96, uh, which is pretty stupid high. Um, and I honestly, like I said, thought about putting it higher. Uh, but just on the fact that I smoked only one of them so far, um, but I did nub that thing. Right. And took my sweet ass time with it and loved every friggin' second of it. Um, so for me, it was with that at least worthy of the number seven spot. I also almost put Blackbird Cigar Company because I had the Finch last week on my list, but mm-hmm. uh, I didn't put it in my list just because I only smoked one. And while I, I highly praised it, I, at a very, very minimal, want to smoke like two or three of a cigar before I put it on my list. Yeah. Just so I can make sure that there's a little bit of 
yeah you know um consistency with it i get it so but that's the only reason not knocking you for it because no, all, I no. almost just said fuck it and I'm putting it in mine anyways. Because <laughs> the Finch, I'm pretty sure I gave like a 95. Was yeah. a good cigar, very very good cigar. Uh, but for that reason, they didn't make it. But moving on to my number seven cigar that we just talked about, I believe last week when we were talking about our favorite uh, band art, or maybe that was the week before. Mm-hmm. Dapper cigar, La Madrina, specifically in Toro. They have a Corona, and I'm a Corona whore. Yeah, but the Toro does it for me every time. Nice. Nope. Be- beautiful art, beautiful cigar. It's just Dapper is a great company. If you haven't dived, dove in, dived yeah. in to Dapper cigar much, you really, really, really need to. Uh, I think that they need more exposure because they're just they're a great, great company, uh, great blends, great cigars. I mean, I love everything they stand for. And I, re- and I really think that says something if you like the Toro over the Corona because mm-hmm. you really are mm-hmm. pretty much. I would you know, not exclusively, but. I mean, you really, you, you, you really aim for the Corona, yeah. Lonsdale kind of, yep. you know, Vitola. So, yep. um, cool. Well, number six for me is a cigar that we recently reviewed, um, and that is the Superfly. Number six. By eh? Oscar Valadares. I know that you loved this cigar, and I did too. Mm-hmm. I think you loved it um, a little more than me. Yeah, I, I um, did a lot. And I don't knock you for that at all. Just specifically for me, um, it kind of fell in that six range just because it wasn't, it, you know, it, it, uh, it's a great cigar, don't get me wrong. But there were just a couple that I had to have edge out for me. But um, it just had that beautiful, like, mint chocolate kind of uh, smell to it and yeah. even taste. Um, and just very clean tasting. Cause I remember saying that yeah. for me, it was more like a rosemary. Yeah. It was very fragrant, very Such herbal and cigar. floral. Yeah, very, very smooth. Very floral. Um, and, uh, you know, got a wicked band. Um, mm-hmm. and we smoked, uh, the Corona. Um, and it's just really awesome. Well-performing cigar. Oscar, uh, really makes some phenomenal cigars. Yeah, he really does. Um, and so for that, number six is the Superfly. My number six has remained my number six for quite a while now. Uh, it is the Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust Mi Querida in uh, Fino Largo, which is their like Corona Gordo size uh, six by 48. Beautiful cigar. Beautiful cigar. I just had one, I don't know, probably about a month or so ago now. Uh, it was on mm-hmm. one of our most recent uh, <clears throat> posts on Kick and Ash Instagram, but uh, it's a good cigar. Um, it's again, it's the cigar that kind of introduced me to the brand. Uh, but it's it's the best. I, now I haven't had the uh, Tricky Traca yet. Yeah, Tricky Traca. I feel like I, I said that wrong, but you might. Uh, the tricky tracker, but uh, that's a good so- uh, cigar, mm-hmm. and uh, it's kind of remained very consistent uh, throughout. I've had several of those. This is the one that you you get uh, banana pudding notes, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. On the cured, I'm yeah. gonna be cured. I, mean, I, I want to say most of my notes I don't have on my phone. I sure, write that down. But yeah, I'm pretty I sure. F- I pretty distinctively remember. It's like a very um, clean, yeah, banana. Because that's another one of those ones that I'm really want to dive into. And good cigar. Yeah, I've just got. God damn it. <laughs> Done it again, Arnie. Um, and when some of these things, man, it was like, hopefully, we, re- we really hope next year that we can even get more into, you know, have even a, a bigger backlog of stuff we've smoked from, just that, um, yeah, that we haven't got a round to this year because, right, we only started this endeavor. Not that we didn't smoke before, we did, but, uh, I feel like with starting this endeavor, we've definitely been smoking a lot more. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, I mean, since, we, yeah. since this, <clears throat> we've definitely been smoking a lot more since we started the podcast, but not only that, I mean, you know, I've smoked before, but a lot of times, honestly, I would get wrapped up and, you know, whatever's going on. And sometimes mm-hmm. I wouldn't take a picture or post or whatever. And right. You know, um, and you know, now we're taking pictures more so we can share with our social media and we're talking about them more and whatnot. But before I never really, I mean, I still like to keep notes and so forth and see where a cigar right. ranks for me and whatnot, but I didn't come up with a list that I was super anal about because I wanted to share it, you know what I mean? So it was a little loose. Right. Um, but 
Yeah, and, and the other thing was I, I tend to stick I tended to stay within the cigars I liked. Yeah. And I didn't branch out as much as I have been now. Uh that we like, you know, are enjoying reviewing them and, right. and sharing them with you guys. So um so yeah, so that being said, my number five cigar of twenty nineteen that I enjoyed was also by Oscar Valadares. And it is the Oscar Maduro. Good cigar. This was a phenomenal cigar. I, I almost, I really had a hard time not putting it higher. Um, but there is just some other fantastic cigars uh, on this list that I had to, to put ahead of it. But this thing um, really blew me away. Was not expecting it to be um, the cigar that it was for me. It's a good and, cigar. Um, yeah, it's just got a nice, like, um, kind of toasted cookie taste to it. It's super smooth, but. Uh, you know, still very flavorful cigar. Um, you know, it's, it's, it was really just, uh, a very memorable and enjoyable smoke. Every time I, you know, come across one, uh, I feel like I, uh, am immediately taken back when I look at it and I'm just like, man, I can't forget how good that cigar is. So, uh, for me, the Oscar Maduro, uh, was my number five. So my number five, full disclosure, isn't something super easily, you know, findable. It's not really readily available. Mm -hmm. They are out there. I'm studying on some. I'll never give away. (laughs) Uh, It is the Tatawahe, T-A-A, which stands for Tobacconist Association of America. It's just a small group of, you know, like top premier tobacconists. Mm -hmm. The 2011 slash 2015 blend, uh, same blend. It was reintroduced back in 2015. Same size, same blend as the 2011. Uh, I have like one 2011, and I have probably like four or five 2015s that I save. I smoked a 2011 shortly after my son was born. It's a box press cigar, much like this one. Uh, it's got a closed foot. Beautiful cigar. The only reason that I I was like, I, I don't know. I want to add it into my list because it's not super. You can't walk into a, you know many tobacco shops. You mm-hmm. know, I'm sure there's some out there, but and just pick it up off the shelf. You know what I mean? But I, I would be doing Tatawahe a disjustice if I took them off the list for that reason. It's my right. favorite Tatawahe cigar. Nice number five Tatawahe TAA 2015 2011. Love it, love it. Good cigar. So now on to number four. Um, number four for me, Guardian of the Farm Night Watch. Uh, this cigar is just Very good. stupid good. Yeah. Um, really, one of those cigars that uh, kind of just blew me away, like from the moment I lit it. You yeah. know, um, doesn't really take long for it to just really just realize that to me it was something special. It's Agonorsa Leaf. Um, and it's just them this time. I think yep. the first guarding the farm was them and warped. <clears throat> yeah, that in the Apollo was yeah. both both warped. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna be honest. I have smoked the original guarding the farm and smoked the night watchman enough to know that I really prefer the night watch. Um, I always want to call it the night watchman. <laughs> I but, I've smoked the original and the Apollo both uh-huh. by warped, and I believe I said this when we reviewed it. The Agonorsa Leaf, the solo project of Max Fernandez. Yeah. It beats both of those. It's nuts. No disrespect to Warped. Sure. Kyle no. Gellis is a fucking genius, in my opinion, in the mm-hmm. industry. Makes a lot of good blends. Absolutely. That, that can't, w- can't hold a candle. To, <laughs> yeah, the, to the, this. yeah, the OG Garden of the Farm is good, too. It's not, it's yeah. not a bad cigar at all. Yeah. Uh, but the Night Watch is just so good, so peppery. Uh, the you know, Orpheus? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Six by 44 Alonzo? Mm-hmm. Good size. Um, and uh, so highly recommend that you find your way into a night watch because it, it's just, it's so good. So is good that is cigar. my number four. Speaking of warped, my number four cigar is a warped, not the Cloud Ooh. Hopper. Okay. It is the La Colmina number 44, which is their uh-huh. Corena. I have a box sitting in my humidor. Uh, I cracked open uh, a box yeah. to give you one last week. You did. For I- Secret Santa. Very excited. It's the to best warped that. out there. It's the most beautiful warped out there. Beats the Black Honey. Beats the Cloud Hopper. Beats La Hacienda. Beats fucking the Futuro, the, the mm-hmm. El Oso, which you can't even get anymore. Yeah. Beats them all. 
Black Omina, number 44, specifically that size. You you may not know this offhand, but what it, what do you know what kind of wrapper that is? Uh, no, is it, I, I don't, you don't know without okay. looking, though. I, I just know it's lighter. It is a lighter it's shade. It's a lighter shade. Yeah. I didn't know if it was a Connecticut, though. I don't think so, but no. I mean, I don't, don't quote me on it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's very, very gorgeous looking cigar, though. It's, it's very, just, there's very few cigars that I can remember mm-hmm. the specifics of them. You know what I mean? Unless I pull it up you know, right. in front of me where, you know, if I sat there and smoke it, you know, every single day, you know, there's certain ones where I know it's a Maduro, but mm-hmm. it's smoke like one a week. Absolutely. You know, so. Um, so on to number three for me is the Fratello DMV. Mm-hmm. Um, and Imagine that. Love this cigar. We've talked about this. Um, We've reviewed it. Yeah, we have. Wait. Well, you no, you smoked it. <laughs> yeah, we never did. We review. actually we, we talked sw- about it. I smoked it on the first podcast we ever did that never got released, yeah. and it was it was almost an instantaneously my favorite cigar at that point. Um, and it still hovered right around there. Um, I didn't. I you know it's it's since then I've just had been fortunate enough to smoke two other cigars that I'm you know really loving right now so right. Uh, but that being said it doesn't take anything away from the fertility and i've said before it's my my favorite cigar to smoke at a barbecue uh just that's just what the, the flavors i get from it just complement you know charcoal and barbecue sauce and all those sorts of uh, it is. things it's a really very well. meaty cigar yeah it's very good very One hearty of the cigars you could enjoy with a steak mm-hmm. and you know i remember smoking the og fratello um we went to Shelly's back room in D.C., mm-hmm. and it went very, very good with that steak that we got. And I can't help but wonder if Omar's love of steak, if he blends his cigars to match perfectly with the steak yeah. and wine. I mean, that's what I paired my cigar with. It went perfectly. So good. Super good. Super good cigar. That was your number four? I was my number three. Your number three. So mm-hmm. my number three shouldn't surprise you. It may surprise you that it's not at higher. Really? My number three is the Yasum Kral Tyrannical Buck. Damn. And when you find out what it fell to, to be my, in my top three. Really? You'll probably understand why. But uh, specifically, the uh, uh, Generosos Maduro. Mm-hmm. It's, the, uh, it's a great size. It's like a five so and a half good. by 40 or a five and a quarter, something like that, by 40 ring gauge. Beautiful cigar, f- fucking phenomenal. Blew mm-hmm. me away, and every single one I've smoked after that has blown me away. I've smoked every other Vitola of it. This one tops it. Yeah, but it's good in all of them. It is, and Risty did a killer job. So good. Killer job blending this cigar, uh, capturing a story with the name of it. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, we, it's been highly praised. By us, what feels like damn near every week, we end up yes. somehow or another getting on the topic of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really wanted it to be higher on my list, honestly, but uh, I'm sorry, you your know, list I'll has flaws, buddy. Explain, whatever. I'll uh, I'll explain why it fell, but still, in my top three, is huge. It's huge. It's huge. Good cigar. Ooh. Top two, man. Top two. We've here come. We go. We've 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 made it to the final. Final uh, round, really. Yeah. I mean, you know. Well, not really. It's a heavyweight matchup on, on both of our sides for number one. For number the final one. round. Well, I know, but I'm saying, like, if you're number one and two are probably conflict, like, you know, you got to choose either which one's going to be one, which one's going to be two. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't too hard for me. Oh, oh, oh. Well, excuse me. Anyway. No, I actually like to smoke cigars. <laughs> That's funny because you never post any lit ones, so. I just took one asshole. <laughs> Triggered. Anyway. Not me. Um, I know. Uh, <clears throat> my number trigger. two, Seagar 2019. Easy. I gave you that for your collection of cigar bands. <laughs> You're a nice guy. Southern Draw, Rose of Sharon. Wow. Didn't even see it coming. <laughs> Southern Draw's Rose of Sharon is a cigar that I will... <laughs> Just fucking smoke. Nah. <laughs> is a cigar. Is a cigar that I will smoke anytime, anywhere, any place. Anyone? Yes. Love it. Phenomenal flavor. Don't know how they do it for Connecticut, but they do it. And I can't get enough of it. And I smoke them all the time. And I have a box that I've pissed through. And I'm going to need another. And I specifically like the Toro. 
The Toro is fucking perfect uh, because their Toro goes, you know, I think their Robusto is a 54, but their Toro is a 52, but it's a little, you know, lengthier. And it's, it's just fucking phenomenal. I'm not even going to talk about it anymore because you guys have heard us talk about it on end. At least me, how much I love that cigar. Pink band, sexy as fuck. Get a Rosa Sharon if you haven't already. Smoke it and then get another and smoke that one too. Mm-hmm. Boom. Number two. What you got, buddy? My number two was a cigar. Rabbit Reindeer? No. <laughs> no. Was a cigar? Not anymore. It, well, I, was, I was talking. You cut me off like that. That was just payback for when I said is a cigar. My number two cigar. I did. I, I almost don't like that it ended up so high on my list because I had my doubts. Mm-hmm. It's the Oscar Valderas Superfly. Mm. The Corona. Hell yeah. You remember me you specifically raised. sitting here telling you how you good raised. that cigar was. Variety you smokes did. a few. They are phenomenal cigars. Flavor mm. bombs. Perfect size. Perfect construction. Perfect draw. Phenomenal. Amazing cigar. And I, I typically don't usually incorporate a ton of brand new releases. Mm-hmm. Not that it's brand new, but super new releases in my list uh, just because I like smoking more uh, and more over time. But But you pretty much knew on this one. Yeah, the number two and the number three, the JSK and the uh, Superfly, dude, were the two cigars. You have cigars that you smoke that you're like, this is really good. Mm -hmm. Then you have cigars that are, "This this is great. And then you have your cigars, you're like, this is fucking phenomenal. Yeah. My number two and my number three, the JSK and the Oscar Valadares. They battled it out, dude. Did but they? them two blew me the fuck away. Mm-hmm. Blew me away. Yeah. Well, I, I will say this, that you don't, I don't see you get as excited as you did about cigars when you, as when you smoked the, the Superfly. Yeah, it was, it was um, good. I mean, pretty much the JSK and the Superfly have been the two for you yeah. that I've seen you get super excited about. And so that doesn't really come as a surprise to me. And rightfully so, man. The two phenomenal cigars. Yeah, very. Um, uh, so, I mean, just for, for it to both make our list um, that, that quickly, I mean, that, I think that shows something, you know? I think I know you're number one. You think so? I don't think you know it yet. Psych. <laughs> My number one cigar of 2019 is the Yasum Kral Tyrannical Buck. I know. I can't believe that you put it at number three, you disgusting pile of human garbage. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, look, Dude, bro. it's so freaking <coughs> good. It is, man. And it's look, so freaking good. If I could sit here and say... That my one, two, and three could, yeah. could be tied up. I mean, yeah. My one, two, and three. It's like one A, one B, one C for me. It is. Because they're so fucking amazing. It is. You know, I, it, dude, it, it really is. Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying that because, I mean, look, here's the deal. I'm not saying that because Risty gifted us those and that Risty shares our content and shit. Because nah, look, I mean... It didn't even, it didn't land my number one. You know, he didn't sure. fucking buy ad space for us to make it as number one or <laughs> no. like that, like the fucking conspiracies go around. Yeah, nobody wants our 44 views ad space, so. <laughs> right, right, nah, right. we're getting up there. We're a little more than 44. I shouldn't say that, you know. Yeah, 45 at least. <laughs> yeah, at least. But <clears throat> the uh, the cigar is, is it's, uh, dude, it's a, it's a great fucking cigar. Dude, it's. And I don't want to keep sitting here and talking about it. Cause I feel like we've talked about it so much. Tired of but I about swear, it. if I didn't give it number one just on the fact that, I mean, I've never talked about a cigar so much, man. Mm-mm. Like we, I mean, we said, you know, I basically love giving this cigar to people and watching them smoke it and seeing their yeah. reaction because it's just always such a great reaction, such great praise. Um, uh, you know, the Gollum, the, the 60 ring gauge to me, might be my favorite Vitola in that thing. And I don't, I hate smoking 60 ring gauge cigars. <laughs> right. Yeah. But to, to be honest with you, just the amount of flavor you get, um, you know, I, it, the, really the reason I picked this and the Rose of Sharon is my number one and my number two is because they're both cigars that I just can't stop going back to. Mm-hmm. I'll have five cigars that I want to try out and smoke 
and you know stuff that I either may haven't smoked or only maybe smoked one of or something or uh, something like that. And for some reason, I'll just go, yeah, I might want to smoke that, but you know, I think I'm just going to smoke a JSK instead uh, because I know it's just going to be amazing. And I haven't had a bad one yet. Um, and I don't think I'm ever going to have a bad one. And it's just uh, totally blown away. And I never expected it because, I mean, for me, when Risty sent them to us, I, to be honest with you, I didn't even really know much about JSK. Um, you know, you, you were the one who kind of told me, you know, look them up, check them out, you know, this, that, and the third. And, you know, I was just excited to be trying something new. Right. And almost instantaneously, I was like, holy crap, this cigar is special. Yes. So for me, it's it's my number one, and uh, I will stand by that wholeheartedly. <sighs> On right. to yours. You want to give me, should we drum roll it? Nah. Look, you really don't think that I would get through a top ten list. I know. I already know. And not mention my fucking man, Robert Caldwell. I know. But do you know which cigar? I have an idea, but I, but I, 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 I I'll fuck hear, it up. I want to. I want to. You probably will, but I want to hear what you think. My number one favorite Caldwell is. Keep in mind, I've mentioned before. I know what that it, this has been. My number one for a while overall cigar, probably since it came out. Yeah, and I've gone through boxes. Yeah. No, oh, maybe not box. I probably went through a box. Young Savages. No. No. What is it? The. Uh, it's the last SAR. Yes. Okay. It's the best fucking cigar. Not only that Robert has put out, mm-hmm. but that is out in the market that I've ever been able to get my hands on and smoke. I got to try it, this thing. Dude, every... I got to say if you're right. It hits every fucking cylinder. Yeah. As I mentioned, I mean, that cigar blew me away when I first smoked it. Mm-hmm. And the Corona Gorda is great. The Toro is great. The Robusto is great. They're all fucking great. Flawless construction. Flawless. Mm-hmm. I'm talking, stand me in front of a fucking fan and that motherfucker will burn straight. <laughs> Perfect fucking draw. Yeah. Wow. It's not a little bit too loose or a little too tight. It's fucking spot on every fucking time. Nice. It's perfect, dude. It's, it tastes great. It's my fucking man, Robert Caldwell. It's been my number one for a while. <clears throat> and I had to really sit there and think, all right, between the Superfly and the Tyrannical Buck. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is tough. You know, I was tough, like, but man. at the end of the day, I'm like, if I literally had to choose only one of those three cigars to smoke the rest of my life, mm-hmm. I would choose the last cigar. It's great. I mean, that, that, there you have it. And it's the more expensive one of the three. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's like an $18 cigar. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, but I mean, dude, they're, they're phenomenal. I still, I still have some. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they, they are, I, I mean, dude, the, I have a hard on for Robert Caldwell because I love almost everything that he puts out. But the last star, I mean, that just fucking that did it. That sealed the deal for me. Robert's a cool cat. He's just, yeah, I love it. Awesome. It's my number one cigar. The last number one, the last star. JSK Tyrannical Buck. How do we do? Let us know in the comments. Tell us how wrong we are. Tell us how right we are. Tell Joey Mainly, how much worse his list how, is than mine. Oh, horse shit. Let's talk about this dude <laughs> not even making Christmas vacation or a Christmas story, even Look, in dude, his I, list. Like I said, man, you pandered. pandered. You pandered to your audience. You went for what the low-hanging ever. fruit, and I understand, dude. I understand, man. Uh, but that no. said, I think we are, are we wrapping up. We're wrapping up, dude. I think we're we've gone. Uh, I think well, we've already gone a little longer than we do. about that we didn't because we jumped right into our topics tonight. Yeah. We have a contest still going that ends... Christmas Eve. Right. Which is probably when you're seeing this episode, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, so it may not be worth mentioning, but we've mentioned it before. I'll put the link in the yeah, description. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whatever. But anyway, if you haven't entered the contest and then you're seeing this before Christmas Eve, make Maybe sure you enter the contest. <laughs> no, I don't, you know what? Now you, you never it, know. I don't know why. Why I even brought it up, because there's no way you're even going to get this thing edited I hope, bef- I, before, who knows, man. before midnight. Who knows? But uh, aside from that, this is something that is still going. Yeah. We are still sponsored by Stinky Ashtrays. Boom. Kicking Ash. S- uh, oh, should almost misspell it. <laughs> K-I-C-K-I-N-A-S-H. <laughs> we'll give you 33% off any 
of the 82 products that Stinky uh, Cigar has to offer. I don't know if we brought it up last week or not. Maybe we did, but yes, beautiful, sir. beautiful Stinky here that we have set up. Uh, we have some other contests in the work. Uh, we do have a contest to win a Stinky, which we talked about last week. Uh, we haven't started that contest yet. We're kind of sorting out some details with some other opportunities that we have. So that will be coming up. But in the meantime, if you want to get a Stinky Ashtray, they're also highly praised by us. The only ashtrays we use, the only ashtray I'll ever use, StinkyCigar.com. Kick and Ash will give you 33% off. Please go check it out. Great for gifts. Even though Christmas is two days away, you can still buy one, give it any time. doesn't have, have to be Christmas. They are belated great fucking Christmas. cigars. Have, you know, some of y'all, uh, some of y'all gifts, still shopping. New Year's gifts. If you celebrate you know, Boxing Day or whatever, I think that comes after Christmas, right? Whatever. Yeah, it doesn't fucking matter. Buy a fucking stinky, all right? Yeah. What are you doing? Get off this page and go, go to stinkycigar.com. Get you a stinky. Stinky. <laughs> Right. Um, uh, so yeah, so we have that. Um, we have some other just really exciting stuff we can't share with you quite yet, yeah. but we have some really exciting stuff in very, the works. Very, very with exciting. Stuff. Some companies, um, some you know, just other people within the industry. Some major opportunities. For yeah. Us. So guys, please keep supporting and rocking us like you have been because this thing is really for us been kind of exploding. Yeah. In a sense. I mean, you yeah. know, it's it's obviously, it's going to be, you know, growth at, at its own pace. But, but it, I mean, we really just... We've the, accomplished a lot. We have. For 11 episodes. Yeah. And the outreach we've gotten has been insane. Uh, the love we've gotten has been insane. So we really appreciate you guys supporting us. Um, you know, we'll see you once more probably before the new year, I think, right? Yep. Next Monday. Next Monday. New Year's. Last episode Eve, of the year. Or New Year's Eve Eve. Something, something. Something like that. But... um. So yeah, so you guys have been great supporting us. Um, I think we touched on pretty much everything except for where they can find us at. You can find us at Instagram. You search Team Kick Ash or just search Kick and Ash. You can find us on Instagram. Please follow us. Uh, we give a lot of our <coughs> contest uh, news and updates and information and just, just a lot of stuff on there. Uh, I'd say Instagram is uh, kind of our bread and butter of where we where we put all of our information out there. Mm -hmm. uh, so please go check out our Instagram and follow us, interact with us, uh, especially if you're looking to win free cigars. And, I mean, we have other giveaways and contests in the works. I'm telling you guys, you're not going to want to miss out on some of the other stuff that we're going to be doing this year. Uh, or, well, probably after the, the first of the year, we're going to be yeah. working on our other stuff. But uh, you can also find us on Facebook, Kick and Ash Cigar Podcast. Please like our page there. Uh, that we don't do too much on Facebook, but honestly, it's just because Instagram has been super responsive. Uh, and sometimes it's just hard to get all those posts in, uh, cause mm -hmm. this unfortunately is not our full-time job right now. Uh, you can also find us on YouTube at kick and ash. Please go subscribe to our page, check out our videos, give us comments, leave us feedback, let us know things on all of our social media platforms that you want to yep. hear us talk about, see us smoke. Drink, whatever. <clears throat> we are Get trying to post more reviews there. Just, yeah, we're gonna, just reviews, not podcasts. Yeah. After after the holidays are settled down, uh, we have, a, again, a lot of stuff in the works, but we plan on doing more mm -hmm. uh, reviews to get out to you guys. We want to release more content throughout the weeks and so forth. Yep. Uh, again, right now, that's a little hard. So after the holidays, we're going to be pounding away at that. Uh, and then <clears throat> our podcast can also be streamed on Spotify and my favorite platform, which is Apple. And if you go to Apple, mm -hmm. bottom left-hand corner, <laughs> you can speed it up, but please slow it down to half speed. Because it's hilarious. Because we sound completely fucking trash. <laughs> yes. And it is amazing. If you haven't <clears throat> listened to this podcast in half speed, you are missing out on a freaking You shouldn't die without listening laugh. to this podcast on half speed. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's everywhere you can find us. Please, again, we're not looking for money. We're not looking for anything but support from you guys and feedback. Whether it's critical or not, we can take it. Yep. We're good, that shit. But we just want to know things that you guys want to see. Again, we started this because we weren't happy with a lot of the other podcasts out there. We thought that we could do a good job. We get out here. Uh, this thing has essentially blown up. You know, we, we don't have 10, 20,000 followers or whatever, but right. we do have a good following. We have a lot of interaction, and, and I, we've accomplished a lot. And it's steadily going up and up. Yeah, it is. It, it seems like almost every week something's... Something we have somebody reaching changing. out to us or 
Um, yeah, there's going to be something. interviews. We're going to be working on patching in some people. Uh, Jonas from Blackbird Cigar Company really wants to be on an episode, so we're going to get him patched in on one. So a lot of cool stuff coming up, guys. I mean, yep. we're we're doing we're doing this stuff for you guys uh, and for us as well. This isn't just a hobby for us. I mean, this is our passion. This is what you know. I mean, we we look forward to uh, every day. I mean, this, this is, this is exciting. Every day we talk about the podcast, yep. Tuesday, Wednesday, all the way up till Sunday, we're talking all day long about our podcast, what we're smoking, what we're going to review next, what we're mm-hmm. going to talk about. And we're getting to the point where we're like, right before it, we're so excited and like, I just feel like we, we really hit our stride with it. So yeah, keep rocking with us guys. We're we going to appreciate give you, what you guys have done for us so far. That's yeah. for sure. We're going to give you a uh, little final uh, flavor notes and maybe a little bit of rating on that. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna see if we, I'm gonna let's see if if we beat Half Wheels '84 on the old Rabbit Reindeer. Um, I'm gonna tell you that. No, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> '83, <laughs> yeah, '83 point eight. Um, <clears throat> no, I will say that um, this actually was a pretty enjoyable cigar. Definitely, um, uh, was underwhelmed by the review I read and expected, um, you know, to maybe not enjoy it so much. But I actually have enjoyed it. Um. I will say it's definitely not crack a 90, uh, though it's probably, for me, uh, like, I'd say an 80, 87. Um, at first, I was thinking 86, but the more I'm thinking about it, I, I have enjoyed this, uh, you know, quite a bit. Um, it's really just got some very mild uh, flavors, um, nothing that, you know, really overpowers you at all, almost no pepper, very mild, maybe a little bit of medium body as I got towards the end here. Um, but basically just got some more of that kind of, uh, hints of milk chocolate, um, and, uh, uh, some cocoa and, you know, just a tad bit of earth, um, almost like maybe a little bit of a sugar cookie kind of taste to it, just a tad. Uh, but again, it's also very mild that it's kind of hard to pick it up. Um, and for me, it just kind of lacked complexity. Yeah. And so that's why it wouldn't bump up into that 90 range for me. Um, but that being said, I wouldn't say that you shouldn't try it if you come across it. I don't know if I'd actually seek it and go out and, and try and purposely spend money on it unless you like the novelty of kind of smoking a Christmas themed cigar during Christmas time. In yeah. which case, you know, more power to you. That's why I'm smoking it. So sure. um so eighty seven for me. Um definitely uh definitely beat the eighty four. But not by much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not by a landslide. Yeah. Uh, so again, I've smoked this before. Pretty much the same. Burns good. Construction's good. Um, I mean, keep in mind, guys. Every week we always talk about how we're touching up a lot of our cigars because our air conditioning unit is blowing directly on us, and that does affect your burn. Uh, nothing different tonight about our conditions in the studio, but the burns remain pretty strong for me. Not razor sharp, but nothing that needs attention. Um, <clears throat> I think I only touched this thing up once, and that was because when I ashed it, I flicked it on my fucking cup and then screwed <laughs> it up a little bit. So Never I had to, had to retouch it up because uh, that part didn't light up again. But if that didn't happen, I wouldn't have had to touch this cigar up once. Pepper, chocolate, coffee, cedar, earth. Mm-hmm. Again, it, little, it lacks a little bit of complexity for me, but it is a great cigar. Uh, it tastes really good. Uh, I, I like the box press. I'm particularly fond of a closed foot cigar. I think it's personally very aesthetically appealing to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the theme of it being ugly Christmas sweater, being a Christmas themed cigar, the novelty is also fun as well. Uh, I would say this cigar is probably like a 90 for me. You know, not super high, uh, just because it, it does lack a lot of, you know, complexity. I mean, pepper pretty much remains all the way throughout this cigar, which is cool. I love pepper, uh, but just not a whole, whole, it's not super complex, but it's not a bad cigar at all. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I think I, I have maybe like maybe one or two more of these somewhere. Um, but very, very good cigar. I enjoyed it. Nice. Just as much as I did the first time. So yeah. can't go wrong with Ezra Zion. 90. Well, there you have it, folks. Our Christmas episode is complete. Christmas extravaganza. Santa's coming tonight, tonight. Santa's coming tonight. Santa's coming tonight, tonight. Santa's coming tomorrow night. It's actually tomorrow night. Next today's the twenty third, but yeah, you know, sure, that's true. If you can name, if you can name what that little jingle's from, he'll give you a free fiver of cigars. 
No, I won't. Ten. I'll give you a free five of cigars if you win our Christmas giveaway. Um, <clears throat> that's true. <laughs> I'll give you a picture of a free five of cigars. Anyway, I think we got it, buddy. I think we did it. How do that's you feel it. about it? Christmas feel good? You ready for Christmas after this? I've been ready, dude. I've been ready for Christmas. I, I, too, take, I take off for vacation, Christmas PTO. And the first day I'm out of work, out of the office. I'm in the spirit. Bada bing. I'm in the mood. Finished everything up. We're good to go. That being said, Merry Christmas to you folks. Merry Christmas to you guys. And as always, have, have a, a kick ass, ass day. day. Jingle, Santa's jingle, jingle. Tonight, tonight. I'm the king of jingling. <laughs>